Hello and welcome to Brian Lomax Movie Talk and my latest Blu-ray update. Of course we've just been past the Christmas season, a load of Christmas presents this year as, as always and they tend to be of the film variety because people know that, you know, that's what I like. Uh, so yeah, I got a ton of Blu-rays this Christmas, uh, a lot from my wife this time around. Um, the first one I'm about to show you is not, uh, but yeah, I, I picked it up. Uh, with some of my Christmas money, um, and that is the Steelbook edition of Boogie Nights, which I picked up for £8, uh, which is absolutely brilliant, uh, quite frankly. Um, Asda seem to be doing some really great deals on, on Steelbooks at the moment. I, I, I don't normally go in for Steelbooks. Uh, I, I find them overly expensive, but... When they're selling them for £8, that really piques my interest, especially when it's a film like Boogie Nights by Paul Thomas Anderson, one of his best. Um, yeah, not a film for everyone, it's quite explicit in parts, but really well written and really well performed by all the actors involved. So, yeah, cracking steelbook there. Um, next up is Crimson Peak, a film by Guillermo del Toro, which I think is quite underrated. I, I thought it was a, a lot better than some people gave it credit for. Um, yeah, really good film. I've only seen it once, so whether it holds up on a repeat viewing, I, I will find out. But I, I think it was definitely worth picking up. Um, next up is Deadfall, which is a film that if you've been watching my videos, you will know I got from Graham over at Man V Film. He sent me a package uh, with, with this and another Blu-ray in. Um, I've watched this since he sent it me and I gotta say I actually quite enjoyed it. It's not gonna blow anyone away, it's you know it's not a classic by any any stretch but it's a really tightly edited thriller, um, quite nicely acted by, by all concerned. Uh, yeah, quite quite nice, I'd, I'd give it a three and a half out of five so Another one, this one is from my wife, and this is Enough Said, a highly underrated film. Chances are, if, if you're watching this video, you, you probably haven't even seen it. Um, but yeah, one of the last performances by James Gandolfini. Uh, the, the director is a, a lady called Nicole Holfstetter, or I, I think I've pronounced that, Holofencer, Holofsner. I don't know how to pronounce her second name. But this is a really, really good film. It's a it's a romance kind of film, but it's I like the way it takes a look at perception and how we perceive the the uh, the roles within a relationship and how you know other people's perception of it can change our own. And it it's a very good film. Um, much smarter, I think, than than a lot of people would give it credit for. Um, but yeah, if, if you if you want to see a film by a female director that, that is, is quite decent, then definitely check that out. Next up is The Guest. This is a film that if you go back to my original review of this a few years ago, a couple of years ago, I think I gave this a 5 out of 10. Um, yeah, I, I wasn't as sold on it as everyone else was when it first came out. I... I I didn't really see it. I didn't really see what people were, were really banging on about. Um, however, it was a film that I thought my brother would like, so I bought it for him, and I watched it with him, and I enjoyed it a lot more that time round. My, my, my rating went up from a 5 to a 7, so I thought, you know, when I saw it on Blu-ray, I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm going to get it, um, because chances are I may even like it more on, on a third watch. So, yeah... Um, the Guest. Definitely one that improved with age, I think. Next up is In the Heat of the Night, directed by Norman Jewison. Um, now, he has done a few other films that I, I do quite enjoy, um, but I, I'm doing a, a podcast with Graham again from Man, Man V Film, Brits on Flicks. Uh, we do that podcast together. We're going to be discussing our favourite buddy cop movies. And I, when I read the, the back of this, it sounds like this may fit into that mould. I don't know, I've never seen it before. But I'm going to try and give it a watch before we do that podcast because this, this may end up being in my top five list for that if it's good enough, if it's as good as everyone says it is. Um, yeah, next up is Jack Reacher. Now, anyone who, again, watches my videos will, will know that I wasn't so fond of the sequel, but I absolutely love this first one. I have it on DVD. 
Um, but this was going pretty cheap, again, at Asda. Uh, so I thought, you know what, why not upgrade? Uh, so I've upgraded to Blu-ray. Like I say, absolutely loved the first one. Um, I gave it a 9 out of 10. I, I may I may go full on 10, to be honest, next time I see it, because with each viewing, I've, I've enjoyed it even more. Um, it's one of them films that, despite people's criticisms, I go back to it and I watch it, and I'm like, actually, no, people are wrong. This, this is fantastic. And it's certainly a heck of a lot better than the sequel, despite what people say. Uh, next up is Joy, another film that, again, didn't quite get the critical praise that I felt it deserved. Um, it's, it's not quite as good as David O. Russell's other films, uh, The Fighter and Silver Linings Playbook, but by anybody else's standards, it's a pretty damn good film and a cracking central performance from uh, Jennifer Lawrence. Bradley Cooper also giving great support. Um, yeah, I, I, I really like the film. I've seen it a couple of times now. I watched it uh, on the plane back from Zambia as well and, yeah, enjoyed it. Next up is The Last Boy Scout. I bought this because it's written by Shane Black and I've been doing a, something of a bit of a, a Shane Black binge uh, recently. Um, but it's fantastic. It's really good. I mean, I, rem I remember seeing this when I was younger and really enjoying it, but it's got all of Shane Black's hallmarks in it you know if you, you know a Shane Black film when you see it and this definitely feels like a Shane Black film the only thing I would say is that I could imagine if he'd have directed it himself it would move a lot faster I think I think it'd be like 90 minutes long uh, if, you, if you look at Kiss Kiss Bang Bang and the nice guys the way he directs it's very relaxed very casual and people speak at you know quite a, quite a speedy pace I think when you put another director on one of his scripts they, they have a tendency to slow them down a bit. You know, that goes for Richard Donner with Lethal Weapon, which is still a classic film, but also Tony Scott with this. Um, that doesn't undermine it in any way, really. Um, I, just, I, I can just imagine how Shane Black would have directed it himself, and I think it would have been a bit of a quicker pace. But still a really good action film. Very solid stuff. And very good script, as usual, from Shane Black. Um, some cracking one-liners in it, as you would expect. Next up is The Place Beyond the Pines. This is a film I have yet to see. Um, I did borrow it on DVD from my parents, but never gotten around to watching it. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm told from so many people that this is a great film, that I, I'm just, on faith, on faith alone, I've, I've just bought it on Blu-ray, because I figure, you know what, if I'm gonna watch it, may as well watch it on, on Blu-ray. And if it's as good as everyone says it is, I'm gonna wanna keep it. So, yeah. Uh, next up is a, another present for my wife. This is uh, Ruby Sparks. Again, another film I've not seen, but it's from the directors of Little Miss Sunshine, a film that I quite enjoyed, I must say. A um, few things in that that were a bit... Mm, but, uh, but on the whole, very good film. Um, and hopefully this will be the same. Southpaw, very good boxing film. Uh, now... It's one of them films that if you've seen the trailer, you've pretty much seen the film. Uh, I hate it when they do that with trailers, but there you go. Uh, but yeah, if you, if you leave a, a long enough gap between watching the film and when you saw the trailer, then you kind of forget most of it and, and the film is quite enjoyable. But yeah, really good boxing movie. I, I don't think it breaks any new ground in the uh, either the boxing movie genre or the true life drama kind of genre, but... It does take a lot of the tropes of both and use them quite well. It um, does a, a nice polished job with it. And it's a brilliant performance from Jake Gyllenhaal, who quite frankly is one of the best actors working today. Easily in the top five actors working today, I would say. Another present from my wife this year, a Stanley Kubrick box set. Um, I was actually looking at this just before Christmas and considering getting it, and I was... I was going to hold off and wait until until I saw what I got for Christmas. If I, you know, if I got enough money, then I might I might buy this. Didn't need to. It turns out my wife got it me. Um, yeah, this has got Lolita in it. Two thousand and one, A Space Odyssey, which I think is a bit overrated, but never seen it on Blu-ray, so uh, you know that that'd be uh, worth checking out. I think. A Clockwork Orange, which I think is a very good film. Barry Lyndon, I remember being quite good. The Shining, which I think is Kubrick's best film. Uh, Full Metal Jacket, again another very good war film, and Eyes Wide Shut, which I thought was a pretentious pile of crap, um, but I've only seen it the once, so we'll see, you know, 
another watch might change my mind. There's also a really um, in-depth documentary on here called uh, Stanley Kubrick, A Life in Pictures, which I'm told is, uh, is, you know, is very good if, you, if you're a fan of Kubrick. So that's a, a very nice little box set there on Blu-ray. Um, so I'm, I'm going to enjoy getting to that, I think. Uh, I, I, I sense a series of Stanley Kubrick movie reviews coming on this channel. So, yeah, if that... That sounds like something that'll float your boat. Please comment below and let me know. And if if I see enough interest, then I will go ahead and do it. Next up is Thirteen Hours, a film by Michael Bay, which I think, judging from <laughs> what I see on the internet, is probably his most critically praised film. Uh, a, a lot of critics really went in for this in a big way, when usually they would be slagging Michael Bay off. So. Very intrigued to watch this. Uh, a lot of my friends on YouTube as well have also had quite high praise for this film. I've yet to see it, but um, on the strength of people's you know, word of mouth, I bought it. I'm looking forward to seeing it. A Suicide Squad. I don't think I've ever done an official review for this film, but I didn't like the film when I first saw it at the cinema. And when I went back to see if it was just my mood, I, you know, I watched it for a second time, I still didn't like it. <laughs> I wouldn't say it was terrible, it was just, yeah, it wasn't as good as people were making out. A lot of people said this was better than Batman v Superman. I think they were completely wrong. Uh, it's certainly no way near as good as the Batman v Superman Ultimate Cut, but I don't think it's even as good as the theatrical cut either. Um, so the question is, why did I buy this? One, I am a Batman completist, you know, I, I even own Batman and Robin, so. There you go. Uh, it is an entertaining film. You know, if you, if you forget about its flaws, if you just try and look past them, you, there is entertainment to be had from it. But I did want to see the extended cut. I was intrigued. And I will say, despite what I've heard from many people who say the extended cut doesn't add anything, I think it does. And I would say that the extended cut is actually better than the theatrical cut, considerably better. Um, enough to raise it by one star, I think. Um, primarily because there is a line of dialogue that is dropped halfway through the film in, in a conversation between um, Will Smith's character and uh, Rick Flagg, uh, between Deadshot and, and Rick Flagg, which gives the characters a bit more motivation. It particularly gives Deadshot more of a reason to rally the team together, um, more of a reason to feel compelled to, to, to make them a team, which in the theatrical cut was very sketchy. It was like one minute these people, yeah, they just, they've been thrown together, they've got no reason to really like each other, they go through one or two situations and all of a sudden they're family, you know, they're talking like they're family. And I'm just like, what? No, I don't, I don't buy this at all. Like I say, it doesn't erase most of the problems that were there with the theatrical cut, but it does, I think, a better job of solidifying why these people would feel a little bit more like family towards the end. Um, so, yeah, still not a perfect movie, but definitely much better in the extended cut, I think. Um, Final one is the Thing box set. So he's got uh, both the uh, the John Carpenter thing in it and the the recent kind of prequel that they did with Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Again, this I got from Graham over at Man V Film. He he sent me this in a package, uh, a gift that he sent along with that the, the the previous one that I mentioned, Deadfall, and a and a Batman hoodie, which was very nice of him to do. So yeah, so there you go. That is all of my recent updates, except for, obviously, that box set that you can see right there, which is the entire X-Files TV series on Blu-ray. Now, I do own it already on DVD, but my wife, again, my beautiful wife, got me that box set because... Yeah, I'm going through all the X-Files at the moment with Graham, again, from, uh, from Man V Film. We, I've said this before, we do, a, we do a podcast called Brits on Flicks, which you can download for free on iTunes. Um, and we, we've not released any episodes yet, but we will be reviewing every single episode of The X-Files. We've recorded many episodes so far. Uh, we just want to record a few more before we start putting them out there. 
Um, but yeah, if you're a fan of the X-Files, if that's something that floats your boat, um, I certainly am. I'm a huge fan of the X-Files. Like I say, uh, you know, we're, we're going we're going to go through every episode. So check out the Brits on Flicks podcast if you haven't already. But that is it. That is my Blu-ray update. Uh, let me know what you think of uh, these purchases uh, and, and our gifts, as many of them are Christmas gifts. Um, and yeah, comment below. Let me know. And until next time. Thanks for watching.